Steve here with another episode of Axis Tech Videos. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up an analog PTZ camera to an Axis network video encoder. Even as the world of IP cameras continues to grow, there are still a lot of analog cameras you might want to bring onto your network. A perk of video encoders is that it allows you to bring an analog camera onto your network with the same capabilities you'll find in an IP camera, which makes for a smoother transition from an analog system to an IP system. Depending on your install, your encoder might be responsible for providing PTZ support to your analog camera. Whether you have a standalone device or a blade which fits into the larger encoder rack, from one channel to 16 channel, all the way up to 84 channels, every Axis encoder comes with PTZ support. Whether it's in the traditional style or using coaxial PTZ control. Here are the components we need to configure traditional PTZ control. The analog camera, a video encoder, a PoE switch, coax cable, two ethernet cables, one terminated and one not terminated, and then lastly power for the camera. Let's get started. First we need to adjust the camera's dip switch. This information can be found in the manual and specifies unique device information. For example, the baud rate and the device ID are determined by this. If you intend to connect multiple PTZs to an encoder, the dip switches need to be different on each camera. Otherwise, you will have difficulty individually driving each one. Connect the camera and encoder using the coax cable. Then connect the encoder to a PoE switch with an Ethernet cable. Wiring varies for different camera brands. In this camera, power and PTZ commands interface using copper wires and terminate with an RJ45 10-pin connector. The unterminated end will connect to the encoder and the power source. According to this pinout, the green and green striped cables are used to transmit and receive data, in that order. The brown and brown striped cables are used to connect to power in no particular order. We should see the PTZ boot up at this point. If you want to connect multiple PTZs to an encoder, this can be done using a parallel configuration. Remember, each camera will need a unique dip switch for this configuration to work. Using two long cables running from the encoder, these will be the points where the transmit and receive cables from the cameras meet. You might call them the home runs. The green or transmit cables will all terminate at one cable, while the green stripe or receive cables will terminate at the other. And with that, we're now hardwired to control one or more analog PTZ cameras. So now let's go configure the software. The first thing to do is to download the necessary drivers for the encoder from Axis.com to run the specific PTZ camera model. This information is under the Support tab where we select Encoders. Here we select the specific encoder we are using. Select the link labeled PTZ Drivers. Choose the camera manufacturer. A list of known supported models is given below. If your camera model is unknown or not listed, try using the Pelco driver. These function with most analog PTZs. Now using the encoder's web browser, we will install the driver and configure the device. Upon logging into the device, you will see the live view appear. Make a note of the settings shown here on the screen. Then go to Setup and Navigate to System Options. Then to Ports and Devices, and further to Com Ports. Adjust the default settings to match those displayed earlier in the live view. Click Enable Termination. Make sure to save everything. Next, select the PTZ tab. At the top, it will ask you to upload the driver. Now that the driver is loaded, activate PTZ on the appropriate channels. Select the device ID to match the dip switch. Select the device type. Now everything should be set up, so let's go test our PTZ. This has been Steve with Axis Tech Videos. Thanks for watching. Please leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought about this video. We'll see you next time.